Greetings, dear strategy fans. Welcome to another Death Talk. This time we have Fabled Lands. Victor is over here to tell us more about it. Victor, who are you and what is Fabled Lands? Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Victor from Plovdiv, uh, Bulgaria, a small Eastern European country, and I'm the sole developer of uh, Fabled Lands uh, with the help of a artist who have uh, designed the logo of Prime Games ever since the start of it. So we two have been working for five years together on on and off basis. And in the last three years, we created and launched Fabled Lands, Prime Games' biggest title to date. And I'm very proud and happy of it and how it is perceived by uh, the audience and the player base. And it's really been a gradual process getting there. Um, what was the previous games that you created? So the first game that I launched was on uh, Android and uh, mm -hmm. iOS, which was a Korean mystery tale. Uh, and it was again a text adventure. Okay. So it's a ancient Korea times, uh, kind of like when, when the samurai uh, in Japan, but earlier were the Huarang warriors in ancient Korea. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, an investigation murder mystery story. And uh, it was like just trying out uh, a free app and how it, it will perform. And after that, uh, there came another horror app. Again, text-driven game, choices. Like choose your own adventure is my jam. Uh, I'm bringing all the old classics from before to um, the modern audience, so to speak, as well as anyone who remembers them and like to enjoy them again. And the numbers from the downloads really inspired me to try and the indie route. And I went full, full indie. Five years ago, I went full indie. And I released nine months into after I uh, started Prime Games, Dust and Salt, which was my first uh, Steam game that also was released on other platforms. And uh, it did okay for a first game unknown, somebody who hasn't done games before did write uh, something uh, did uh, decent numbers uh, not great not terrible and this motivated me to try uh, and expand on it to build up, uh, on it and um, after um, my next sci-fi uh, text adventure I finally went to the UK and uh, got the rights for the Fabled Lands game box yes so what is what is Fabled Lands about? Like what what story is there involved? What is the world? Um, I don't know. Describe it in in nooks and crannies so the viewer and and uh, audience can understand where they're going to. So these amazing game books were created in 1996 and 1997 in uh, in the United Kingdom by Dave Morris and Jamie Thompson. And they were one of their kind because they were the first open world game books. So you're playing uh, on paper something that is going to become a genre in, in PC games. It, it, roaming the open world uh, uh, map of the Fabled Lands, crossing from one book to another. It was revolutionary for the time that they came out. Unfortunately, they came out towards the end of the game book era mm -hmm. so fighting fantasy and uh was a very popular series blood sword way of the tiger and all of these were very popular in the 80s lone wolf as well uh, but towards the mid 90s they were starting to decline in popularity across the globe in every country except maybe the states with their choose your own adventure because choose your own adventure continues to even to this day to be mm -hmm. um, active and, um, and for, so they didn't, they were very much enjoyed by the audience back then, but so they um, just, uh, every publisher was uh, running away from, from game books at the time. I see. So, I see. so they had a, a, a hard time with the, well, marketing and, and making yeah, a buck exactly. of their project. So, uh, so the project actually was unfinished. There were 12 books planned but only six saw the light of day at the time. Oh, okay. And, and the difference to other series, for example, like Game of Thrones, that is still left to be finished, uh, is that <laughs> because of the open world nature of these game books, 
uh, they are not necessarily needed for uh, for uh, there's no main story arc there is no mm -hmm. main plot uh, the story is built out of the experience and adventure of your character like a role playing session with a dungeon master that is that has prepared a living world each uh, fraction each kingdom has its own agenda everyone uh, wants something done for them and you are there trying to survive trying to make a buck and you can be a trader you can be you can role play a thief you can role play a pirate you can role play a, 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 an assassin yeah so it it's it, it, which contract you're going to pick which quest you're going to pick and decide to, to, to make is entirely up to you and this will build your experience. Mm -hmm. So your experience will build up the story and your choices will alter the world and in different places the fractions may advance thanks to your help. Like for example the first major area is called Sokara, the War Torn Kingdom. And mm -hmm. two major fractions are fighting for dominance there. So you can choose to help uh, the old king has died and the military uh, have overthrown the heir and have established their own uh, agenda capital mm -hmm. yeah and you can either help them by chasing tracking and, ch uh, and killing the descendant the prince of the old king oh, or okay. you can decide or you can decide and help the prince to, uh, to become king and regain uh, so, Kara, so depending on your actions, you can change the course of the entire country. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it's it's what you expect of a choose your own adventure book is that you make choices, you roll the dice, you slay some monsters. And if you live long enough, you will see yourself on the top and, and, and complete uh, complete everything in the game. <laughs> because you say if you live long enough, I gave it, uh, I think already f five, six, six tries. I died horrendously, uh, but uh, I enjoyed even that journey until the end because it was, well, my decisions that led me there. Uh, but uh, it was, it was super intriguing. It was super intriguing and, and I joined every little nook and cranny. Even the death, I mean, some people are getting salty because they have now invested, I don't know, five hours into their run, and then it's over. And if you're, as I do play games, mostly, I click when there is an Iron Man mode, I click on Iron Man mode. And it's like, I stick with my decisions. If it's over, it's over. I'm not going to reload and be like, yeah, let's try the other one because I didn't manage the first one. So, uh, Iron, the, the presence of Iron Man mode there uh, indicates that the game can be beaten on Iron Man mode. So, uh, there is a lot of randomness initially. At first glance, you try to uh, travel different locations, roll some dice, and usually the dice can just end your adventure. So, if the player, uh, who is at the time unknow unknowing of what is to come, uh, would decide that pure luck is driving his adventure. However, there is certain meta knowledge that you have to acquire uh, as, as you progress in the game. So usually you put some characters in the grinder. So mm -hmm. you, you, characters will die like napkins initially. Until <laughs> you, until you uh, start to um, obtain um, some resource and, and, and try to manage your luck. So luck can be managed. You can achieve 100 success or nearly 100% success on the dice rolls. Or uh, even if you uh, even if you can't, even if you die, uh, there are so-called resurrection deals. So resurrection deals can be arranged in various temples in, in, in the cities and they will bring you back to life. Yeah, you will lose your current progress in terms of equipment and anything mm -hmm. that you have carried on you. But you can buy a townhouse and stash backup uh, equipment there. Mm -hmm. And there's plenty of loot throughout the game, plenty of unique and legendary items as well, which are very powerful. So uh, you can you can be prepared for any kind of death, and just it will be kind of like a minor setback. So, Fabled Lands to me is like the Elden Ring game box. Can you find something like this? Yep, you can find something like that. Yes. You so can since we're actually. Since... 
Yeah. You can actually obtain a castle at the later stages of the game as well. So you can have a castle, bring up its defenses, uh, train uh, your soldiers, your footmen to defend it. Uh, and you can, uh, and you, you even have a court wizard, so the wizard can try and enchant items for you. Can I just um, be a princess and be like, give me food every day? Exactly, and re reclaim your stamina back to hack. It's mm. maximum. So um, since we're talking about stamina, uh, death mechanics, Iron Man modes, and uh, such and such, what kind of uh, mechanics as a player do you expect, or are you like thrown at? What kind of mechanics? We heard dices, we had decisions making. Uh, how do they work? How they are they, they linked together? And also, since we're talking about in story and RPG in a sense, um, are there any classes that you as a player choice before you go out into your adventure? Absolutely. So, um, starting from uh, back to front, there are six professions that you can choose to pick from. So mm -hmm. you have warrior the troubadour the rogue the mage and the wayfarer and the priest so you can uh try your luck in any of those six professions but keep in mind that you start as a nobody you start yeah. as a nobody in a harsh world you're not going to save the world you, eventually you might build up to get there but it requires investment initially you, you you're pretty much screwed everyone wants uh, to kill you um so Six professions, and those six professions matter um, not only story-wise here and there, but their abilities dif differ, and their abilities for uh, someone who has played the game more would mean that uh, the starting path of every profession is going to be different because each profession has different strengths and weaknesses. So their abilities are like the skills in D&D. Like, mm -hmm. you have charisma. So your troubadour has high charisma. So the troubadours expect that they would engage in persuasion and, and, and they can uh, sing their way out of a conflict, for example. <laughs> it's also according uh, to your witcher. Yeah. Um, and priests are... Uh, any, uh, so priests are um, the antipodes of, of the mage users. Priests and mages don't get along really well. Uh, so... Usually you can uh, be strong uh, against the anti uh, against magical stuff with a priest because uh, the power of the gods will aid you there, for example. And mages are going to be uh, proficient in their arcane arts. Mm -hmm. And uh, so their starting the starting points of their abilities will matter for a player who knows where is what. Initially, it will be difficult, and and the player must try and role play around that, but. As I said, the grinder with the heroes will teach you that... Um, Learn an uh, arrow. Yeah, especially with Iron Man mode, that <laughs> you have a, actually quite, quite, quite a lot of starting paths. A lot of different strategies. I have seen players from the community do really crazy stuff. For example, like the castle is in the final area of the game, which the castle that you can obtain, for example, your own mm -hmm. castle. And I have seen players completing that quest with cookie cutter strategies really, really super early on. So that, that they can establish their castle really, really early on in the game, which is difficult and requires a lot of preparation. But okay. uh, from then on, they have a base that is really strong and, and, and they can just ease through the rest of the game, for example. Uh, yeah. It's always uh, so, exciting to see how, how uh, community and exp especially when uh, you have a wide audience playing your things, it, what kind of passages and thoughts are inclined to play out their path that you often probably as a developer never could think of. And then they just surprise you and do like, well, this is end game content. And he's kind of like, no, I did this at level one <laughs> or something like that. Exactly. I, I, I have this guy actually who was on the Discord server some months uh, ago, who was like, uh, hey, that dragon fight, uh, it's really tough, uh, but, uh, you know, I decided to uh, beat it on rank 1, and and, and, he, and he did, and he <laughs> did, and, and it, it, was, it was, like, super amazing to watch that. I mean, as, as an indie developer, um, 
to have a community of people playing your game, giving their thoughts, giving their feedback and well, their experience is just amazing to me. It's, it's, it's like this gives me energy to uh, constantly work on the game and constantly try to improve it, constantly uh, develop it more because it's, it's huge reason for an indie developer to be an indie developer to get some feedback uh from from the community to see people engage with the product and 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 um be passionate about it in 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 the early beta test days i had i i had a beta tester who was writing to uh, uh me in early morning my time and one day i figured out that wait this means that it because he, uh, he's in the states this is super early for them mm -hmm. and i was like uh, what are you doing this so much early and, and he says like the kids and the wife are still asleep. This is my time now. <laughs> and, 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 so, and, and so this guy got really, really up really early and he chose to play my game. And, and th this was very powerful for me. This, this was really one of the reasons that I wanted to try and make games and exactly for that reaction. And, and that it's so better awesome. testing. Better testing is not even the complete product. Yeah. So a uh, really important thing that I had uh, mentioned in the, the department uh, of the mechanics is that uh, the game offers turn-based combat. So mm -hmm. each profession is essential at the beginning in terms of what abilities and how they will uh, tackle the turn-based combat. It's a hex-based tactical grid that a lot of people are familiar with. It emulates a simple... We call them like over here sexagons. <laughs> because we, li we like our, our hexagons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, it, the idea of this uh, combat is to complement the rest of the game. So, uh, don't expect huge tactical depth in terms of uh, like other renowned um, names of the genre. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's but uh, I have received a lot of the feedback that it is fun. It is enjoyable. It is pleasant. You have uh, various skills that you can obtain. So there is character builds. So you can use uh, active and passive spells, and you have seven slots. And as you're going up okay. in rank, you gain more skills, or you can find them because it's an open world. They're sold as skill books. Buy them, learn them, and you can. Uh, Pre-combat, choose uh, any of the ones uh, that you have at your disposal, uh, activate one, deactivate the other, and try the combat with them. That sounds amazing. That's how, yeah. that's how this person bought, uh, was uh, managed to beat the dragon on rank 1, was by obtaining those uh, skills and going for a build that is really, really strong in a one-to-one -one combat. Well, since it's a, a, a story-driven decision, no, decision-driven story game, let's call it that. Um, what kind of lore is behind Fabled Lands? Like, what what is going on there? What is the world? What 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 is the core story thread of it? Like, are there major factions? Is there is that a complete fantasy world with creatures? Give it just a, a slight sign of of uh, what we can expect as a player. So um, it's a fantasy world, definitely, and it's mm -hmm. a little, it's uh, it's a light-hearted fantasy world initially, especially initially. It's not uh, very grim dark. Uh, it's more like a fairy tale vibe to it. But mm -hmm. uh, as you progress more, you begin to leave the more medieval uh, fairy folk uh, type of uh, fractions and countries and travel to the more uh, Parts of the of the land that which are uh, uh, hostile, which are uh, have more magical creatures in it, like vampires and witches and, and uh, storm demons and whatnot. Okay. That, so uh, the further and further you get into the game, you will um, be, uh, begin to unravel those uh, bigger storylines. So the, mm -hmm. the the story lines that you make, so you you travel and you hear rumors. Like in every inn, you can buy drinks, for example, and you can hear a rumor, and the rumor will have some sort of a clue in, about an area or a quest. Mm -hmm. And as you and as you progress and gather more and more lore, 
uh, you will begin to tackle those bigger storylines. So there are storylines hidden, which are spanning more areas. For example, like uh, the biggest storyline spanning all of the uh, books, mm -hmm. and it requires every every area to complete it. So it it builds up, it builds up, it builds up, and builds up, and and you get more and more world building. So what you experience at the end is your character story and lots of lots of world building that you will get to know the fabled lands and what really they are about I and you can expect cultures yeah you can expect different cultures um like that are referencing historical uh cultures from our world mm -hmm. like nomads like the medieval knights mm -hmm. like uh, the byzantiums for example mm -hmm. it's like uh, or or the ancient Japanese. So I'm currently working on the DLC that will be coming uh, later this year that will mm -hmm. uh, include the ancient Japanese island of Akatsura. It is ancient Japanese themed. It is not directly uh, I hear you. Yeah. From history, but you will see the fractions you will, you will be able to um, tackle with the shogun of the area. So it's yeah, it's hugely inspired by that. And uh, further on, there is the ocean with uh, the pirates and, and sea creatures. And further south is the continent of Ancon Kono, which is like the ancient Mai, uh, like jungles and, mm -hmm. and, and pyramids. So in a re reference like going over from Europe to untamed uh, America. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, so, I see. Yep, and everything, there, there are people, people are, uh, so it's, Kind of like Game of Thrones, uh, it's like people are uh, the main um, inhabitants of the lands, and mm -hmm. the mythical creatures and the magical fairy folk are more like in the peripheral. So you will engage those creatures and uh, uh, these uh, more elven, elven-like pranksters and whatnot, if and goblin-like folk, if you travel further and further from the human land. So, can you cooperate with them or like i don't know become their leader become like public king follow me so they're a little bit so i i don't want to spoil uh what you can you, you can do with them but for example you can trade with uh, some of the most dangerous people from the underworld the trow and they can give you access to the most powerful items some of the most powerful items in the game or you j could just be dragged into the underworld and you can never return to see the day of light. <laughs> so it really depends how you uh, commun commune with them. I see, I see. <laughs> oh man, I'm excited. I'm excited to hop into it and uh, show off uh, the dear viewers what the Fabled Lands is and how it plays and how it looks. Uh, before we do that though, what is the thing that you are most proud of or most excited about in terms of development and playing your game like what is your crown jewel of fabled plans so to say i would say it's the iron man mode <laughs> crafting around the iron man mode okay so yeah. this game is meant to be played on iron man mode yeah so i have a lot of comments about the saves coming in the, in the negative department Mm -hmm. Some of the reviews that I have received are not always positive, of course. They're negative and they're like, this no. game is just saves coming. It's I, I constantly die. That's <laughs> that's absurd, etc. etc. But uh if you learn how to deal with it, you can have a successful Iron Man mode run. Like any any play uh, any of the Iron Man mode players who have I uh, I have encountered could beat the entire game in a single run because they know how to tackle it and each of them had different strategies so this is the strategizing part of the game this is why this game i believe is in this tactical is because not only the tactical battles in turn-based battles that you have uh, here and there but because in order to beat the game on an iron man run you have to really strategize and uh and and come up with a plan uh how to do that Exactly. So beating the game on Iron Man, Iron Man mode is kind of like reaching rank 10 currently in the main game uh, on Iron Man mode, getting all the achievements. Okay. Well, yeah. that sounds and, amazing. And, and, and I think we're going to give it a try with Iron Man mode and just 
see how how it is intended to play because storybooks like that for those who have never re re had the chance to read such um i mean fabled lands is of course way more complex than the one book uh story adventure that you can grab here and there but imagine i don't know it comes up in a book there is a banging on the door and it says open the door or hide in the closet and when you say open the door read on page so and so when you say clo close uh hide in the closet read on page so and so and depending on your decision your journey could be over after five minutes of reading because you decided to open a door and there is a freaking monster banging on the door and it rips it to bits because you opened the door um so yeah i i get i get the idea behind it and uh i well don't get why people don't don't read it read into it and and um played how it is meant to be but everybody has a different taste on how stuff plays and whatnot so that's totally fine with no further ado let's hop over into the game and have a look at fabled lands so there we go let's bring up the beautiful music of the game it's already very happily fairy like wants me to um hang inside with some leds and dance around the fire something like that so um you said that the game starts with choosing your profession so to say what okay. profession uh, do you suggest us to grab or is it okay if i grab any on my of my liking uh grab of your liking grab of my liking well then it will be the one who runs his mouth a lot and uh, sings his way through that sounds definitely like me then we have the choice of male or female um i gonna be evil here and name her chelsea like my wife and uh we're gonna give her some nice braided hair there are different instruments uh, I like this loot. There's a different talisman with flowers. That looks good. And then she can have a bird at the end. Oh, that's cute. Let's grab a this one. So you said they have starting skills. We have over here illusory clone. So on range one, I create a clone. Number of uses is two. Does that mean that in a battle, I'm maximus maximum uses is two of this spell? Yeah. Okay, then we have Song of Swiftness that embodies me and my clones in the area of effect, granting me plus three defense for three turns. Okay, if understood correctly, the idea is to create clones and then buff them and then watch them do my work. In If it comes to a battle. You can try that, definitely, but depends. Uh, the key uh, sentence here is that they're on one stamina. Oh, yeah. So you're tankier than the clones, no matter how much you buff them. I hear ya, I hear ya. Well, we're gonna have a look. We're of course gonna play it on Iron Man mode. Recommended for the best experience once you have learned the game. We're gonna learn while doing so. We have you as a guiding hand here. So, starting in Iron Man mode, we'll override... Yeah, that's okay. Lands up into it now. Ooh, that's a huge map. Is this just the beginning island or is it the complete map? This is the complete map that you just saw. And you can open the map in the upper right corner and see because you're currently on this island. And you can see how small this island is in comparison to the rest of the world. All of the druids. Let's have a look at this island over here. Uh, can I bring this back up if I click it away? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, good. So, let's have a look at the island. Oops, no button. This is, yeah, not very huge. And then we have a look back here. Holy moly, okay. Yeah, we have quite quite a lot of lands to have a look at and cover. Is that a turtle with a city on its back? Exactly. A great turtle. Carpus. <laughs> Lovely. I love the art style over here. Gives me a little bit of, um, I don't know, Lord of the Ring vibes. When I look at the uh, at the map, 
good. Back in here. Um, guide us through here. What what do we see here? What is the interface? We have up here our character. Uh, what can we yeah, see in here? Your currency, stamina, and currency, and this will lead you to your inventory if you click it, for example. Okay. Um, ah, I see. So, so your we have inventory, the stats. Hmm? I see. I see. We have uh, charisma, combat, magic, san city, sanctity, sanctity. Give divine power. Okay, so sanctity is probably something that a priest is interested in. We are a very charismatic character combined with a little bit of thievery. Okay, then we have the different uh, slots for our, our items that gives us a bony if it comes to combat. Okay. And then uh, all the titles that we can grab. Curses, diseases, resurrection, deals, and so on and so forth. Nice. Then over here we have the minimap. What is the objective tracker telling me here? Completed quests, goals, exploration goals. So yeah, so these are the achievements in the in, in the game. Oh, I see. So if you unlock all of the achievements here in this list, uh, you have covered like nine percent of the game, and they are hidden stuff for the most uh, hardworking people out there to discover, which are beyond these achievements as well. Mm. So, it, it, because it's, as I said, there is no main uh, story arc. The game doesn't end. You can continue and roam and explore the world as, as much as you want and end it whenever you want to end it. So, okay. the progression for the achievements is an important meter for someone who would like to put an, an, put an end somewhere. Like, okay, Fair enough, I can yeah. have an end goal there. I hear you, I hear you. So, so at the at the bottom you have the uh, icons that will uh, bring back the text, then you have your inventory, mm -hmm. then yeah. you have your uh, spells. So Ooh, each profession, schools. yeah, different schools, and you can learn spells from the other schools as long as you uh, meet the requirements. For example, you will uh, advance in scouting, and if you reach high enough scouting, you can learn uh, wayfarer abilities. Okay. And then you have the uh, quest log. There we go. So so all of the quests will be tracked here. I see. Then bottom right. Yep, you have the ship's manifest. So this is a game which you can buy a ship and decide to go sailing and oh. this is going to keep track of all your ships all your cargo because you can trade cargo with the ships then you have the personal notes because i love this um you, you would have to, uh, as i uh, and the personal notes, uh, personal notes are shared across all characters so uh as i said you need to acquire some knowledge until you start to understand where is what and so personal notes is your personal notepad where you can um Set ideas that you won't forget between characters, for example. So I love that fact that it is uh, a shared thing the where you can, you know, in a sense, you're trying to beat the game and uh, try different approaches, probably with different uh, characters themselves. And you share these notes and the findings in the completion of finding your way through and and with the notes that you have putting the information together and get your way around to well let's say beat beat the story and beat the game that's a clever idea i like that i love when uh, you can take yourself uh notes in there i'm a, i'm an old school role player so i'm always here with my pen and paper when i play games even even uh, new uh, like more action paced stuff like I don't know the latest Assassin's Creed for example I just even though the quest is telling me and there is a quest marker pinging where I have to go I'm taking notes down because I'm used to play games where I don't have somebody holding my hand and be like oh just go there absolutely this is the magical worlds you said uh, no um, there's no hand holding in this game you will have to discover uh, oh, well, the then. various mechanics on your own love that and so I, I will i will be here and help you because otherwise you just perish <laughs> so um what do you reckon should we go through 
the text and uh, presented, or should we try it to skip through and show off some parts of the lands mechanics and something like that? What do you reckon would be best? Well, reading the text is all about the game, of course. Um, so you, you, you can read, for example, the intro just to give a, a, a glimpse of uh, how the, the the text flows. And afterward, I can uh, guide yeah. you on a little bit more uh, mechanical playthrough, something which has been done on a stream so far. Very, very good, very good. Because the story part is then for the audience and the player to exactly. fall down and experience on their own, uh, taking their time. And uh, okay, then let's hop into it. The Isles of the Druids. The approach of the dawn has turned the sky milky gray green, like jade. The sea is a luminous pane of silver, holding the tiller of your sailing boat. You keep your gaze fixed on a glittering constellation known as the spider. It marks the north, and by keeping it to port, you know you're still on course. The sun appears in a trembling burst of red fire at the rim of the world. Slowly, the chill of night gives away. A wee breeze warmed. You lick your parched lips. There is a little water slushing in the bottom of the barrel by your feet. But not enough to see you through another day. Sealed in a scroll case, tucked into your jerkin is a parchment map of your grandfather who gave you this on his deathbed. Remember his steering tales of far sea voyages, of kingdoms beyond the western horizon, of sorcerous islands and ruined palaces filled with treasure. As a child, you dreamed of nothing else but the magical quests that were in store if you too became an adventurer. You've never expected to die in an open boat before your adventures even began. Should we continue from here or, or skip? I guess this is like an intro kind of thing. Yeah. You can you know skip. What? Okay, let's skip it. Battered and bedraggled, you lie gasping for breath until you hear someone walking along the shore towards you. Wary of danger, you lose no time in getting your feet. Confronting you is an old man, clad in dirty loincloth. His eyes have a feverish bright look that is suggesting of their mystic or a madman. Well, 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 what do have we here, friends? Asked the old man. He seems to be talking to someone next to him. Although you're certainly he's alone. Looks like a washed up adventurer to me, he says in an answer to his own question. All wet and out of luck. He carries on having a conversation that quickly turns into a, a heated debate. He clearly is quite mad. Excuse me? Uh, excuse me? You shout above the hubbub in an attempt to grab the old man's attention. He stops and start, steers at you. Is this the Isle of the Druid? You ask impatiently. Indeed it is, says the old man. I see that you are... I see that you are from a far land, and so it's up to me to welcome you to Hakuna Matata. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, but think you may have much to do here, as uh, it's written to the stars that someone like you will come. Your destiny awaits you. Follow me, young adventurer. The old man turns smartly about and begins walking up the path towards some hills. You can just see some sort of monolithic stone structures on top of them. Okay. I'll let you take your over and uh, guide me further. What shall we do? Um, scour the remnants? Scour the remnants of the washed shores. Uh, apparently we find a healing potion lying adrift from our boat that apparently destroy the barn. Should we follow the old man or explore a little bit the island here where we are? Explore on your own. We're we're the developers. We can do it. Exactly. Want to explore the coast? On your own. Let's make a move. Good. So, uh, now the decision? Although here was blind, you can always go back and find the healing potion on the coastline if you haven't picked it up initially. I just mm -hmm. know it's there. So, uh, definitely go towards the settlement. Okay, so we're gonna pick the coastline. The island is heavily forested, and uh, there's a couple of ships anchored at the settlement ahead of us. Good, we're going to the trading post. Hmm. What do we have here? It's like an interaction so, hub? Yeah, so these are the cities, and the cities act as, as those little hubs. 
and um, usually you have the larger the city, the more things that you can do there. Okay. Um, so you have usually you have the market. The city I may have. I guess that's a port. the the bag over here. I see that we can buy equipment and stuff. Then the port yep. is okay. Passages to other lands. Or you can buy a ship and a cargo for that ship and and uh, crew. So mm. in the different types. So because this is a small settlement, uh, you can't actually purchase a ship here. But uh, in the town description, there is a hint at what these people are uh, good at. For example, um, they, they, if you read through the text carefully in the various places of the world, you will learn, for example, that uh, some, somewhere furs uh, are very viable, uh, uh, while in other places it could be grain or minerals or metal. Mm. So this is an, a way to give you a hint uh, when if you decide to go uh, in the trading route department that uh, you can write in your notes uh, uh, trading post this is uh, really Other cheap druids. while yeah I'll treat trading post uh, and you can uh, leave notes like that for you until you discover uh, which prices are uh, best in the various places I see. So in the trading post over here, these export first. So I guess I can buy here very cheap first. And if I find some place where they are freezing to death and they need first, I could come over here, grab a bunch of first, bring that over and make a profit. Exactly. That's amazing. Okay. So we know Isles of Druids trading post first. Cheap. Buy now. Yeah. And then you have the uh, uh, the inn, the Waco Inn. This is usually your uh, source of healing. So resting at an inn, like in the old Baldur's Gate days, is going to bring up your health. Mm -hmm. And this comes for a cost. I see. In Recover bigger... one stamina for one shard. Shards are the money. And then stamina. Is stamina deciding my actions or is this more like my life? This is your, like your life. Okay. So if it drops to zero, you're dead. I your see, adventure I see. is then going to be over. No chat, so we're not gonna kill a dragon at level one. Yeah, definitely not. <laughs> I don't want to spoil the, the one of the strategies to do that. Uh, I'm still amazed at the, at the person who discovered it. Um, so, you have a house stash here. So, in the trading post, you find an abundant uh, an abandoned house, mm -hmm. and then you can now access from the house stash from the same icon. You can access your house stash, so you can leave possessions here for safekeeping and you can leave money here for safekeeping so there uh as i said lots of people that want to uh uh spare you of the equipment and money that you care make your life uh, harder so you can leave them here for safekeeping uh not to lose them if you get robbed or mug is the 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 stash accessible from any point yeah. of the world yeah if you buy a house you can oh, okay. access if you your buy stash. a house okay yeah. i guess or, we're not gonna uh, stay here so quests, take my yeah, money certain with quests will get you uh hideouts which again will uh, as a reward will be able to access your your house stash so you have 16 shards initially because you picked iron man mode so this means that you can't buy anything but okay. since but since I uh, know the game, uh, we can do a little bit uh, a cookie cutter thing. So uh, I suggest you sell all of your equipment that you currently have, which is a mace and an armor. Good. Selling all our equipment. Yep. Sell. Sell. Keep the healing potion and buy a, a, a crossbow and bolts. A crossbow weapon. And the bold ammunition. Yeah. Um, five. Yeah, you can not. You cannot afford more than that at the moment. So go ahead and equip that. So this is uh, range combat uh, helps. And if you are super early on range combat with the troubadour, I will show you what you can do. So uh, okay. it, uh, the temples are uh, very important as well. The temples will give you, uh, it's the main hub for obtaining quests. 
So two temples mm -hmm. here, you can read through them and you can get the quests. At, there's two quests here at both locations. Shrine of the Goddess of Wilderness, Lacuna. She's the patron of hunters, trappers, woodsmen, and all of these seeks to be one with nature. Okay, the other one is... Nigel, the Lord of the Lands of the Dead. <gasps> I like her. <laughs> Let's visit the Warden. The Warden is in charge of security. We've had an unfortunate mm, accident, he says wordily. In the crypt below, their temple is sometimes experiment with corpses of the dead, you know. The occasional zombie part of the rituals in honor to participate aspects of Nagil. We will revere here. It seems a ghoul has escaped from these pits and terrorizes the villagers at night. We'd rather someone like you sorted the problem out before the militia got to hear of it. Destroy it and bring me the ghoul's head. Okay. Why not? Yeah. And uh, make sure to grab the other quest as well. The, oh, there's another the quest. Yeah. Sure cool 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 now. Talk yeah. to the priestess. Dressed in silken robes, wearing a wraith of oak leaves. Ooh, sounds fancy. I have need of an adventurer like yourself. For arcane reasons involving the secret mysteries of Lacuna, I need the tusk of a boar. A were boar? A what? A were boar? Okay, in fact, hunt that one and bring me his tusk. In return, I will teach you how to be a better scout. Uh, sounds good. Right. So an important thing here is that you can open your quest log and uh, see the quest that you have obtained there, and they're marked uh, in their difficulty. Mm. So the task, the husk, maybe first since it's easy. Yep. Okay. Uh, and it's marked over here on my map as well. So I guess it's somewhere either at the stones or up here. Uh, let's go to the stones first. Uh, we want to explore the island further. And we can go to the coastal road. And there's some... What does it mean when there's question marks popping up? So this means that uh, there is a random encounter at that place. When there is a random encounter, means that you're going to roll dice. And you might not get what you want by rolling mm. the dice. Are we talking about D20s? No. Uh, uh, the system uh, for this is D6, so... D6. Okay. Well then, let's hop into it. You're on the coastal road that snakes along the Wimsted cliff huts of the north of the islands of the Druids. Uh, two to five attack the high attack by high with men. Six to eight you meet the militia. Nine to twelve attacked by a. We okay, so we want the nine or twelve to have the wear boar encounter yeah. because we're looking for a tusk. Hey, there we go. A ten. We're attacked by a werebor. I'm not sure if that is a good thing, but we'll see in a bit. A werebor in ornate armor comes thundering out of the undergrowth near you, raised with a spear. There's no chance of retreat or surrendering in this battle. <laughs> Jet says stream luck. Uh, oh my goodness. Okay, uh, wrong button. So, we have here some clones. Let's bring clone number one. He has uh, the same weapon as I have, right? So he's cloning himself. Exactly. Yeah. Does he use my ammunition if he shoots? No. There we go. <laughs> Eat that. Um, let's bring another one. Oh, we can deal with that. Another shot. Another shots. And uh, hopefully the killing bow. Oh no, we missed. There we go. Beautiful. Easy fight. Well, I was worried a little bit, but we got it. We got it. And we have the Werborsk Tusk. Nice. And we have a spear. Can yeah, I have so the spear can... and the bow? Yeah, yeah. You can definitely get the spear because we didn't have a melee weapon. Range two even. Nice. So you can step from afar. Yep. Good. Let's bring back the husk to the temple. 
It is a monk. It's very good. We, we've been at the shrine of the lacuna. Talk to the priestess. The priestess who's wearing the skin of a wolf is covered in red paint and welcomes you gleefully. At last, the task of the werebo! Now the ceremony can go ahead. The priest rewards you with knowledge. One scouting permanently god. Nice. Um, can you do anything else? Uh, because I see that you can become an initiative. Is this then for the priest playthrough? Can you go towards this path even if you're another class and have nothing to do with it? Yeah, you absolutely can. And it's actually essential at, uh, at various quests in the game. To be an initiate of a certain god can help you a lot. And some of the gods can help you um, right away. For example, the god of thieves, who is sick. If you become an initiate of sick, you gain a one thievery bonus while you're an initiate. And oh. uh, this is instantly boosting your, your, your ability. Um, so how, how much does it become to become an initiative? 30 shards. More than you have. Okay, with so, one shard. So actually, I would suggest to sell the spear because otherwise you'd be uh, broke and not with no money. So you, you have to. Uh, uh, it's better off selling it. Okay. All right. And now that it uh, that this is done, you can heal yourself in at, at the local inn, and that uh, does keep your healing potion. Rest until fully healed. Yep. Nice. Yeah. And then it, uh, we can get a blessing. So the blessings are really important from the Wakuna Temple. Uh, be, without becoming an initiate, you can get a blessing. The blessing of each god gives you a certain ability. For example, the Lakuna blessing gives you a reroll at scouting ability. So whenever you're going to fail a scouting ability, you can get another shot at it. Ooh, that sounds nice. So, so for people who can make the odds uh, on, on the background, like who are more math heavy, would, would see that having a reroll uh, significantly boosts the chances, especially once you hit like the 60% uh, chance of success mark. Mm -hmm. And then you it, it definitely boosts uh, uh, that. And the reason we got that is because we are going to hunt ourselves a goo now. You can buy more boats before you do that, just just in case. True, we have only four shots. Uh, bold ammunition. Uh, yeah, let's, yeah, let's grab six shots. Good. We're broke, and let's go out to... So, uh, I will leave you on your own for now to find yourself a ghoul. Oh my goodness, difficulty 10, odds of success 58, and it's a magic roll. It's a failure. So this is how failure won't break the game, but it makes stuff more harder. I'm not sure where to start looking for the ghouls. You wander around looking for stories, strange murders, anything that might pull you on the trail. So definitely you can use a blessing now. So this is a hard roll because you failed the magic roll. You don't know where to find the goal. So you have bad chances at the scouting roll, but you can try with a blessing still. Find with a blessing. No! Out of luck. There's some rumors doing some rounds at the tavern. The trail of the gruesome murderer and the tales of the terror leads to an old cemetery in a near desert part of the Knoll Old Quarters. It is early morning, only an hour or so before dawn. So you have almost no time before the ghoul goes into hiding. Ooh. You thread your way through the pitted tombstone and brooding crypts in the cemetery under a pale moon that raves the graveyard in sickly paling light. Suddenly a foul stench fills your nostrils and a figure rises up out of the shadows. Yellow eyes glow with feral bloodlust and the creature sinks its black teeth into your arm before you can react. You have been infected. You now have a disease. Corona. Uh, <laughs> cool bite. <laughs> Until you find a cure, you have one point subtracted from your sense sanctity, combat and charisma abilities. No ability can drop below one. A ghoul, a rotting walking corpse, lunges at you. So, because in this current choice, uh, 
you yeah. cannot use uh, the salt and iron fillings option because you didn't do something before in advance. Mm -hmm. So this is, if you if you succeeded at a certain ability, it would provide you an additional choice how to, ha how to handle uh, how, an, an encounter. Or a uh, direct, yeah, the rest of the choices. So there is, comes a little bit of role playing before you know which is what, and you're a you're a troubadour and you're not a priest, so you definitely won't be able to have really great odds at invoking the power of the god. So I I would suggest that you definitely fight the ghoul. Let's fight it. Oh, I love the art, I love it, dude. It looks terrible. It has uh, fifteen. Stamina. Let's start popping out my illusions. And turn. Luckily, it's very slow. Range 5. Can I shoot behind obstacles? Like if I place yeah. myself over there? Yes. But they're... Okay, the action point of shooting is 6. Okay, so I cannot shoot. And the turn. Let's throw out another one. And the turn. Shoot. Very good. At least it hits. Shoot. Another hit. He was... Is it for me also six? It is for me also six. That costs me two action points. So I'm gonna move back here and we're gonna play the Song of Swiftness. Nice. That gave us all a defense three. Coming closer. Take a shot. Take a shot. Take a shot. Very good. Like that. Greatly. Yeah. Well played. Easy fight. You have a crossbow, though. Is it because of the crossbow that there was an easy fight? The crossbow helps. Yeah. With the, so the crossbow troubadour. Uh, hint hint is a really a strong early build. I see. I Ready. see. For the early I want the build for the I I will draw it and uh, the first locations afterwards. It's it's a very 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 decent build. So dear warden here have your thing. He wants to give me five hundred shards. What? It's a lot of money. So the. It's a difficult choice, actually. So, a number one is a plus one magic item. Uh, 500 shards is really nice for uh, obtaining and unlocking uh, lots of potential for the next moves. A free resurrection deal, however, would save you in case you die. Well, I think let's go for a free resurrection deal. Death is just a flesh wound. <laughs> I love it. Uh, so the priest protects uh, the ritual, and I guess if we die, we're gonna pop out back here. Yeah, exactly. At this location, and you will be losing your equipment and uh, items that you carry in your backpack. And this actually includes quest items. Oh. So uh, quest items in this game can be can be lost, and you will not be able to complete the quest. So that's why you have to take care of the quest item. And sometimes you just can't, uh, depending on the choices that you, you make. You may not be able to stash it. You may decide that it's best for you to carry it a little bit longer. And that's part of the story of the character. So completing every quest with a single character is hard to do unless you're very experienced in the game. But this gives the unique playthrough of a character because not every player is a completionist. Like uh, me, I love just to have a good story and good run. I don't need everything completed. Exactly, and failing a quest is not the end of the world because it will uh, change uh, the course of something for, for, for better or for worse. That sounds amazing. So, now that we have helped the priestess and whatnot, what do you suggest shall we go next? I know from my tries that the obsidian sto stones are sending you off in different locations yeah so we should we're ready to leave the aisle there's a little bit more on the aisle to do but we will leave that for for people to discover on their own you can okay. now uh leave so uh when you turn the ghoul quest uh they noticed in the text that you are diseased 
uh, and they advised you to seek help in the blessed springs in Sukara. So um, we can Sukara. get rid of your Sukara disease. Sukara is over here. That is yellow yeah. cord. Blessed yeah. springs is over here. So I guess the decision, the direction we want to go is then the yellow port. Yeah. Okay. I'm just making teleportation sounds. So we are now in Sukara. In lovely little port town. I don't know why, but this town visually reminds me of... Um, uh, what was that called? I think it... I think it was in, in World of Warcraft, a little goblin town that was built out of ship parts in little... Look, nearly yeah, yeah. very interesting like this. Really, really reminiscent, yeah. So, what should we do in this uh, dear yellow port? Should we try to find a cure? Should we wander around well, in the city? So definitely grab some quests first. Um, okay. Again at the temple. At the temples and the inn. Okay, visit the temple of Maka. So here is actually uh, uh, one way to get rid of, of a disease, but it's costly. Okay. The holy it's, moly. Okay. Yeah. But we know a better way because um, the of warden the of the springs. temple of Nagil uh, told us about that. Mm -hmm. So, however, for future, um, if you obtain a blessing of Maka, you wouldn't have get a disease in the first place. Because it will pro pro protect you. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, can I have multiple blessings, or do I have to choose a specific god that I'm blessed of? You can have multiple, but only one from each type. So okay, ideally, yeah. you, you should have one of each type every at every time wh wh when you travel. But this is uh, when you start to get more money. So the money, the shards, is really important for you to unlock your potential of not dying and not losing your stuff. Because if, sense, if yeah. you access to blessings, uh, you will see also access to potions. Potions will boost your abilities as well temporarily. And uh, resurrection deals constantly. Uh, when you die, you lose a res resurrection deal, but you can get a new one. So shards are really, really important. Uh, and there is a little bit of grinding in the game. Um, if you don't Fair know enough. where the big, where the big money is, you can grind and uh, obtain shards until you have enough, feel confident, and move on. But uh, yeah, you can you can grab the quests from uh, this temple here exactly. Yeah. Go to the high priest. So the high priest tells me of a golden net of the twin gods that has been stolen. Uh, the positive ones worship the fish god Wanes, who struggle with the Alvir and Valmir for control of the sea. Okay. The second city lies under the coastal waters of Shadar Tor, where. The hell is that? So not uh, uh, you have to accept the quest and it will uh, let you know. Oh, okay. So it's it? giving me an, an hint there. I see. Yeah. Good. Any other quests then we can grab from? Uh, no, not not here. Uh, but here there you can there mm. is the second temple that you can get a resurrection deal. For example, here is the difference between a profession. The warrior can get. Um, a really cheap resurrection deal. So 800 shards is a lot of money. And oh, usually yeah. you don't have access to resurrection deals. But the warrior can become an initiate of Tyrni right away because he Tyrni is the god of combat. Mm -hmm. And uh, this will cheap. This will make the resurrection deals a lot cheaper and you'll be able to get them for 200 shards. So part of the Iron Man strategy is, okay, I will pick warrior because I have early game, quick access to cheap resurrection deals. I so see. I need only 200 shards to sustain a resurrection deal and not die. So, uh, uh, an Iron Man... Mode. Yeah. <laughs> an Iron Man, an Iron Man um, play requires you to plan uh, uh, so that you have always uh, income. And 
so that you can replenish yourself and then you will be able to complete the run uh, or, or uh, without dying but getting to rank 10 is also challenging and uh, you have to be prepared for that as well so exploring the day uh, exploring the city I mean uh, will bring various um, encounters which are unaware uh, what is uh, which is what okay well then let's have a look at the city at day I'm gonna go to the pool quarters harbor area or around the palace um we are a troubadour we're looking lovely we're red-headed we know how to play music maybe the rich people will give us money a patrol of militiamen mercenaries uh p of the dictator general grief stop you they decided you'll be arrested unless you pay 50 shards taxes well damn uh, dear man, I do not have those shards. Please let me go. Refusing to pay your taxes, eh? Huh? Says the leader. That's a crime for sure. They close in around you. You'll have to think fast. Oh boy. The odds of success is very slim. Uh, okay. Yes! Successful charisma roll. You spin them a tale about how your poor brother, a mercenary grief Moloch's personal guard, lost his legs in the fights to overthrow the old king, and that you have spent all your money on looking after him. Several of the militia are brought to tears by your eloquent speech. They end up having a whip around among themselves for your brother and give you 15 shards. <laughs> <laughs> Chuckling to yourself, you return to the city center. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> yep. Uh, should we explore the other, <laughs> other parts of the city as well? Uh, sure. You can you can explore the city by night. Ooh, explore the city by night. Instead of to explore the city at Yellow Port at night, unwholesome surface with reeking air and dusty stretch. Um. Explore the storehouse. You hear muffled cry of distress in a dark alley. Uh, none of my business. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm not going I there. I sensed you <laughs> heroes already. <laughs> no, I did not. I'm just I'm just self-aware that I'm not going there. Uh, what else do we have here? Let's go to the wealthy area. There's a pale woman in black leather casting you an enigmatic look. A thievery roll. Mm. You have the woman's wrist in split second before she can cut the strings of your money pouch. You drag her around the face, you? Yeah? But she meets your outrageous skull with a swashbuckling grin. You've got reflexes, she says. Most of the street scum around here drink sudden of dim-witted to notice the loss of a few shards want to earn some real money hmm uh, no thank you we're not into petty thievery all right so this is playing it safe so uh any so the choose your own adventure comes here if you have uh, um went with it you would have unlocked an adventure in both places that depends the outcome on your abilities Okay. Preparation. So um, you're you're cautious, which is definitely going to help you live longer. But sometimes you will miss on opportunities because they won't come back a second time to be there on that place. So the the game is a little bit static in certain places because it allows you to grind. Because without grind, it would be hard. Mm -hmm. um, without without knowledge. Uh, Otherwise, it's not necessary to grind if you know your ways around. So to say, um, there's some uh, safe gates installed in case you are, I don't know, stuck in a certain position and you're like uh, missing exactly. five shards for some, I don't know, climbing equipment, for example. Exactly, yeah. Uh, but so missing on those opportunities will be... Uh, a uh, so those are, for example, missed achievements sometimes. This will indicate that you have missed something, but... For other people, uh, uh, only particular set of people who want to replay 
and find out which option is which. We'll, we'll un un unravel those little secret stories that will get them sometimes uh, loot that will help them in a certain scenario or just a neat reward or a neat story to tell. Okay, you, right. you got me curious now. Can I go back to that lady with the theory thing and be like, ah, no. oh, but I changed my mind? No, it will be a different uh, thing then. Okay, I see. Good. Um, so you can well, we... definitely stop by the, the inn to grab the quest there and also the training guild. Oh, true. And we I'm have uh, enough... about the training guild. We have enough money. So let's go to the tavern here. Let's buy drinks on everybody. That sounds like me. So. You fall into a conversation with the pilots and kindly old scholar priest. Many years ago, a book of the seven sages was stolen. Uh, and you suggest that the scorpion men are in possession of it. I need a young adventurer like yourself to travel to the scorpion bright bites and return the book. Okay. Book of the seven sages. Good. Should I keep buying uh, drinks for them and listen to rumors? Uh, you will learn. Uh, it's always nice to learn a rumor. I'll keep the money for now because you said we're going to the trade guild. So maybe we'll have to invest here or do something. So what do the trading guild do? Oh, the trading guild is another mechanic in the game. Uh, so you can invest money and you can... Uh... They will play on, on, on a trade with them and uh, you can check on your investments and see um, if you have profited, if you have lost or lost it all. Uh, so the guilds is um, it's a mechanic based on chances and odds. So those who are good at calculating odds will be able to figure out the guilds game. But I have mm -hmm. seen a uh, uh, few people so far have succeeded in, in this area um, but it's definitely an option the idea is that this world is rich on options the more you travel the more options you will discover and all those little options here and there will give different goal and meaning to your playthrough and I hear you. Uh, yeah. this this is the uniqueness of, 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 of this game uh, in terms of world building uh, it's deep but you have to work hard to discover its secrets. And I like that. And it's also giving you a purpose to visit and come back and try different approaches, try different classes, try different uh, uh, strategies to play out and see where that brings you in uh, terms of either achievement hunting or uh, reaching quote unquote the end, but there's no necessarily end. Yeah, J just an example with the trading guild, uh, there is a certain strategy also from the community. You, as you progress in the world, because it is a bigger world, you, you start to unlock quick travel uh, items and quick travel locations. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a spell book called Vademekum. So the Vademekum is uh, for magic users or professions who has excelled in their magic skill. And they allow quick travel between cities. So you can quickly travel between the major cities after obtaining it. And that way you can um, collect knowledge, which are the best trading routes in each city, and then go back to the guild, invest, and have a huge bonus on your investment check. And that way you can uh, go for the big, big money. Mm. So this, this is a strategy that uh, is viable for some professions, not all. Uh, at uh, different stages of the game. So, a player who has lost a mage but has discovered the Vada Mechum and has lost another character and has discovered uh, what bonuses here and there are with the mage guild, with the trading guild, uh, he can then combine this knowledge and go super early in the game. Instead of doing the Isle of Druids, for example, we can use the, tra uh, the, the standing stones to travel further and further and deeper into the world, get the book quickly, Start traveling and amass money that way, for example, and this is an easy, easier early game. So this this will unlock an easier early game. So various ways of approaching this. I love when a game is so vast in directions, choices that you can make, and uh, whatnot. Talking of choices, let's go into those springs that they were talking about to get rid of that 
vile no. ghoul bites. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, you can start follow... by the... Follow the river, yeah? Uh, just follow the river. You're following the river, of course, of the... You. It certainly does stink. Let it in sulfur as it is. Mm, delicious. I love this little art style here with the little... Um, what do you call these? Imps? Imps, yeah. This is from the original books uh, by the amazing Russ Nicholson. Stung by large golden ins. Wow. Wow. Stung by large golden insect. You are stung. You have poisoned by a stung of an insect. You have one point subtracted from combat as a weekend. You're poisoned, but you can restore your abilities to normal if you get cured. <laughs> Ghoul bites, poisoned. Yeah, things are not looking really good for you. Uh, if you hop on your adventure sheet real quickly, uh, you will see uh, which, uh, which is the uh, second, yeah? You will see in red uh, the ability that have been reduced. Yeah. Here's so your combat currently is one. Right? So if I'm not mistaken. In, yeah. If you come into yeah, combat, so there will be a problem probably right now. Yeah, because combat of one, meaning that you will have lots of misses. Mm -hmm. And if you miss a lot, they will get close to you and just hack and slash you. So getting off, uh, getting rid of the disease is uh, crucial, but you don't have any money. Oh, well, I thought it's it's water. We just bathe in it and don't have to pay anything. Yeah, but you will discover that you need an entrance fee in order to get to the spring. Of course, they need to capitalize even freaking bathing water. <laughs> Especially if it has magical powers. Especially then. Um, well, let's have a look no, at I the the tavern then. Um, I mean, I don't know how much... For aroma. Um, should we? I was thinking because I don't know how much the fee is to get over there. You don't, you don't have it. So you need some money somewhere. So you can you can continue uh, here, for example. Oh, you're missing something. So you, you should read through that. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sacred River has it cut its way through the high grounds on the edge of the Chesn, but the overlook of the river lies the village of High Teris. The locals are behaving very oddly. You watch the villagers lay out a fine feast on the village green. A pig is set roasting on a spit, loaves of freshly baked bread, pods beside bowls of overflowing with fruits, butter and cheese. Okay, now I'm hungry. Lastly, the richest merchant of the uh, village brings coffers full of silver which they set beside the table. To your amazement, instead of sitting down to dine, the villagers then scurry home and start closing shutters the windows. So they put out a feast and money that looks sounds definitely like a trap. What goes on here, you ask? Why do they behave so oddly? The villagers seem quite frightened of you, but one old fellow has the nerve enough to reply. This banquet is for the ghosts of the three travelers who lost their way in a storm, fell into our mill pond and were drowned. When was this, you ask? Seven years since. They come here every year on this night, and if we didn't placate them with victuals and treasures, they'd be a mess of a trouble. How do you know that? Old Megan told us, he says. She knows much of our things. Hmm. We're not gonna watch for any ghosts. We are poisoned. Uh, leave me be. So let's go to the eastern road and uh, go towards the springs. Okay, there's some pilgrims and benefax. The question for Chad appears. Uh, do you plan on uh, going further down the road of development and whatnot to craft such an experience uh, as a multiplayer? I mean, I'm, I'm hard to think of how you can make such a multiple choice dice game into a multiplayer thing. But, uh, yeah. Do you think uh, on expanding and trying out to implement multiplayer so you can adventure in co-op? Oh, actually, I have played the co-op of the Divinity Original Sin series, uh, which is somewhat closer to um, what this could be uh, and I have imagined doing that but for as a solo developer you have to really be careful not to uh, um, overstretch, overshot 
yes scope creep uh multiplayer support uh is a hefty task for a single developer and this would uh, cut other opportunities that the developer can invest his uh, or their uh, strengths in so for this particular game i have decided not to go that route but i do want to get there eventually so i definitely want to get there eventually here here chris uh, it, there you have your answer for example there are a renowned game book series that i um can say here on Tacticon that I will be working on uh, in the future, uh, where you can uh, actually have a co-op, and this has been its unique feature when it came out in the 80s. It was like, the, it was like uh, before Dungeons and Dragons were popular in Europe. This was the thing that you can sit down with your friends, gather up, everyone can pick up a hero, and uh, start adventuring, make the choices. Uh, and uh, fight in a tactical uh, battle. So, Are I we talking definitely... about the black eye? Uh, no, I won't. I won't use any titles. Um, <laughs> okay. But uh, th that person is really a bullseye on what I want to do in the future. Okay, I'm am curious to see. I'm curious to see, and I'm also curious to explore more of uh, Fable Land. And of course, of my luck here, because Chad had to say that we have streamer luck and good dices. My luck runs out. We got stinged by a, an insect. We got bitten by a ghoul. And now, apparently, some crazy mad pilgrims are attacking me who are going towards the Blessed Springs. And I have to find. Wow. Our luck is running out, and there are even two of them. So hovering on their on their uh, portraits uh, will tell you something more about their stats. So, uh, for example, their damage and their action points will indicate how fast they will be able to get to you and how much damage uh, you can expect from each of them, for example. Mm -hmm. Or if they have any special abilities. So in the first area, uh, there, there usually aren't special abilities, but as you progress further and further in the game, uh, enemies will become more and more powerful. Uh, there are certain mini bosses here and there that have uh, abilities that can uh, be challenging, and it will depend on your build uh, and which skills you decide to pick pre prior to the fight if you are going to handle it. Okay, I hear you. I hear you. So, well, we keep with the strategy of range. Is there an Weights thing? No, there's no weight thing. Enter. Cast another one. I guess the clones have the same uh, minus things as I do. Or are they stronger than I? Uh, same. Okay, let's take it out. You first. That is a miss. Yeah. That is a hit. That's a good hit. There we go. One down. Ooh! Beautiful. I was worried there. <laughs> you got it. You got it. I was worried there for a second. And we're getting a staff. And a potion of Godline's Alchemy. Gives me plus one sensitivity so just before making an ability roll yeah so those are the potions i mentioned which will boost your abilities plus one well let's reach the springs and see if we can get healed here alchemy shop blessed ill tavern explore we want to go into the holy waters 35 shards? What? Cheats. So okay, let's so see. A quick yeah. mini adventure here. Uh, go to the tavern and buy drinks. Let's do that. Uh, a few local discussed recent events. It seems some Hadad's beasts made a lair in a cave on the hill. 
Oh, and I saw that we could explore the hill. It's a gorlock, says the farmer. It's amassed quite a bit of a treasure by all accounts, lifted from victims. A brave adventurer like yourself could get rich if you kill it. Being as, uh, doing a favor as well. Nobody comes back to tell the tale, says the innkeeper. Okay, so if we go up to the gulag, that might give us some money. But I'm not sure we're gonna be able to survive that. We're gonna definitely want to make a scout check here, since we are having some points in scouting, if I'm not mistaken. Check your abilities. Uh, Check your scouting abilities. three, magic four. Okay, so actually magic is... We're more inclined into magic, yeah. so let's go for magic roll. 41%. Oh! Successful nice. magic roll. You recognize the tracks of those legendary Golok and remember is said to have backwards pointed feet. So the track leaves will always show the opposite direction that it travels. It means the Golok is currently inside the cave. That's... Wait a minute. I am waiting. four on thievery. Well, let's let's see. Let's wait for it to leave the cave. You wait for an hour. The dusk, uh, something emerges. It's a golok, a beast with legs like a bird, a body like a reptile, with two short forelimbs and a beaked lizard-like head. You see that the two legs have backwards pointed feet. The beast heads off into the hills and you creep forward. With the golok out of the way, you free to investigate its lair. Inside, you find 500 shards, a mace, and a silver nugget. Wow. Good for you. Oh, definitely. That means we can finally bathe in the holy waters. Here have your stinking 35 shards. And let's uh, bathe. Oh, there's a use a vial of yellow dust. Very nice of you noticing that. So there are those. So these are locked choices, and those are hints that there is more to this area. Uh, if you later stumble on a vial of yellow dust, then you should know that you should come back here to check what it can do. Mm -hmm. Bring yellow dust to healing springs. Good. Bathe in the water. Strip off and wait into the bubbling waters. The effect is astonishing. You feel a sense of well-being cursing through your body. And all our diseases are gone. That means all our stats are back up. Charisma is on 6, combat on 3. Nice. Really, really nice. So now you can go to the potion shop. So the alchemy shop. So potions here boost your abilities temporarily with plus one because they're basic potions later in the game you can you can find legendary potions that boost you more so it's generally a good idea to have one of each okay because so want a potion with, with... of of strength and a potion of uh what's that charisma potion of magic we have one of those already uh potion mm -hmm. of thievery and a potion of scouting. Yeah, and, and a you potion can actually, of healing. Uh, get a potion of healing. Uh, wh what happened with your previous one? Did you use it? I, I did use it oh, because it was down on uh, two life points and had no shards left. Okay. Uh, all right. So you have some preparation now with the potions. So you you had a little bit of luck with the money, and you invest again in into potions, which is preserving your luck which is increasing your chances of success. Now, mm -hmm. combining a potion and a blessing gives you not only a bonus, but a reroll as well. So this boosts your chances even more. So this is the way of fighting the odds, and this is how you beat the luck. Oh, I see. So that's how you can quirk a little bit the rolls behind it to be more in your favor and more likely to succeed on that. So taking your time, uh, reading the the situation and preparing for it is crucial, I guess, to overcome all kinds of obstacles, challenges, and uh, roles that will hit you on the way. Exactly. So, uh, can we check on your thievery real quickly? How much is it? It's on four, and with a drink, on, we could go up on five. True, true. Uh, so, let's do a quick... Uh, early character boost. So you can leave this place now. Let's go out of here. 
and you can travel to Marwok City, uh, which is in the south uh, east of the map, the big castle in the capital city, south the, east. That one over here. Exactly. So Good. go there. Let's go back to the eastern road. Don't madman. Oh, goodness. Maybe you have to fight again. Well, we know now how they, how they work. Uh, let's place in front of me. So I can shoot right away. Beautiful. Let's place you over here. Shoot. Shoot. Easy, easy fight. Do I get another stick? Yep. Oh, I get another potion. So another potion, another stick, and you can sell uh, your loot. And get Let's get a Venifax. And go to the markets. And sell. So you have two weapons that you can sell. And there's more money for you. So, there is a quest here that you can actually attempt. Let's and have a look so, at that. Yeah, you can explore the city. Uh, uh, read. Uh, yeah. uh, Venifax is a strange looking village. It looks like a single gigantic building. All the houses are joined together from the jumbled mass and none of the houses have doors. The only way it is through holes uh, in the rooftop. Ladders lead up to the roof, which uh, in effect forms a network of streets that the inhabitants travel across to get certain buildings. We had to build it that way for defense, says a passing farmer. You see, the scorpions men from the south cannot climb so they can't get inside the town, huh? Wandering around, each clamber down a ladder into a long, low hallway, the Venifax Market. The sign reads, closed on Thursday. Fortunately, it's not Thursday, and it's a stocky barrel chest with a piggy eyes introduced himself as a f as force the master of the market there is not much for you to buy or sell in this provincial market items with no purchase price are not available locally we can explore the city you think the place could be potential interests so we have the chat with villagers on the rooftop let's have a chat with them a small boy runs up to you saying, Help! Help us! The man-eating bloodthirsty gobgobbler has my little sister. His mother, a flaxen-haired beauty, comes up behind him. Surely you mean bloodthirsty, not thirsty? You ask. Oh no! Replies the young mother. The man-eating bloodthirsty gobgobbler is named because it hunts only on Thursdays. The boy's name is Mikael. And his mother is Lynn. Her husband is away in the army and her young daughter Haley was taken by the beast last Thursday. Apparently several people have disappeared never to be seen again. Please help us. Yeah. Let's help you guys. You wait until Thursday. Lynn tells you that the disappearance happened a little way out of town near an old farmhouse. You leave town to notice Force, the master of the market, heading to the opposite in the opposite direction. Wait, he is closed on Thursdays. You little sneaky one. Let's follow him. After a while, first circles around heading uh, out. There is Wait, a nine. Before. Okay, so before you roll the dice, drink the nature potion. Uh, that's that one. Consume. Right. So, 72 now. You see? Dice. Yep. Still failed. No! Still failed. It happens. So passing through the wooden glades, you hear the horrendous trumpet noise. Suddenly a massive bear-like form about the size of a large bull appears in front of you. It looks rather like a huge hairy toad with gaping toothy mouth. That sounds so disgusting. The creature breathes a billow cloud of noxious sulfurous gas at you. You feel your head swim as you start to fall asleep. Oh shit. You succumb to the insidious breath. As you come to the insidious breath to the beast, you become round and realize you have been robbed of all the possessions and money you had. The unpleasant reality, reality, real, English. 
then hits you even harder. You were sold into slavery and set to work in the tin mines outside of the city of Karun Baru. If you ever escape, you are certain to will seek vengeance from these thugs. And now I'm in slave. Oh, <laughs> this is great. Well, we're now slaves. And with that, I would say um, we hop back here to us too. And uh, that's exactly the magic what I think happens in uh, games like this. That uh, a little bit of, you know, chance and a little bit of decision making and those put together and creates a great story for you that, to play out uh, with also some uh, mechanics into battle if you uh, uh, encounter those in terms of turn-based combat. Uh, and uh, <laughs> I'm actually now super hooked to the story, even though I've not invested too much into reading it out because normally I, I read every lore bits that I can, take my notes, absorb everything. It's how I play, but for the sake of presenting it to you guys, uh, Fabled Lands, we kind of skipped through a lot and, and showed you a few mechanics and twists and nooks and crannies. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying it. I'm curious what will happen to our poor Chelsea, who is now a slave in the mines. If she, if she survives that and gets out of there, or if she will succumb and die in the pits there of uh, mining. <laughs> I had fun. I had fun. So, it's definitely one of those cases where uh, things go south, but you get a new story out of it. So, you're enslaved. As a slave, you have a chance to escape. So, you you might live to see uh, another day, but since you earlier uh, picked as a quest reward a resurrection deal, even if you die, your game will continue, which means that you can seek vengeance later on. Oh, so the game recognizes, um, so to say, a, a rival, let's call him a rival, that yeah. uh, ends your life and then marks him as your uh, vengeance quest, so to say. Yep, and sometimes there will be uh, foes that uh, have actually uh, requirements that you have to fulfill before facing them in battle because they just won't die. Even if you mm -hmm. kill them, they will resurrect. So you have to learn their secret and how uh, their deathless uh, beings can be actually turned into mortals. Oh, that is so cool. That is so cool. Well, ladies and gents, dear strategy fans and uh, lovers of good stories and RPGs, I hope you had a great time with uh, Victor and I about Fabled Lands. Do you have any last words out there to the dear viewers live right now and those watching later? So, uh, definitely consider this game as an old school gem. It's like bringing back uh, the advanced Dungeons & Dragons era of very brutal adventures that could be really really interesting but uh helps you if you're skilled enough if you're knowledgeable with the game enough to overcome all those obstacles and create a unique experience a unique story and unlocking more of the world is like a really a, a dungeon master who is uh giving you a soul experience and and this is really really precious to me as a role-playing fan um, that's why I enjoy this type of games that's why I make them it, it, it's like a, a, when you have a little bit harsh DM you know those DMs that enjoy killing their players but you have to really be have your wits about you so that you can withstand and survive well, long enough and uh, experience and, and uh, the stories that, so it's that a, sounds like a DM great. that I would be yeah I'm like, did so, you not pay attention? Uh, Weather. Exactly. Really kudos from me to the authors uh, who created this in 1996 and 1997, Dave Morris and Jamie Townsend. Uh, Big shout they out have to Jamie programmed Morrison. this on paper and it's really amazing. So I have uh, adapted it. I have added more mechanics on it. I have balanced uh, things because on paper you can't exactly balance everything especially mm -hmm. over over years but uh, it's really really true to the source material it tries it tries to stay faithful that's why it feels a little bit static sometimes but it, it, it uh, i think this is the charm of it so that's what i want to leave the players with um, try to experience the charm of the old fantasy adventures lovely 
and you can feel the love and the passion that you put into it. Well, check out the title. It will be in the description. It is right now in chat. Wishlist it. Have a look at it. It helps the developer a lot. And uh, hopefully we're going to see more from you, Victor. And hopefully we're going to have you soon again here on the show for Death Talk. Maybe with your DLC. Maybe with uh, your next plans and works uh, when you have something to announce. Thanks a lot for hanging out with us. And until next time, see you.